Welcome to Miami Talks, I'm your host Nadia Sencio and today we're coming to you from HML House of Faith in Miami Lakes, Hialeah. Behind me is Brian Padron, barber extraordinaire. He's the genius behind House of Faith, there's many geniuses here. Let's recap our week and we'll get right back to Brian. Tonight we're at UM at the Loyal Art Museum for the We Are Miamians event. Now this was an Instagram contest that they held, full bottle, thank you so much for everything we actually entered, let's see if we win. You see new perspective, you meet new people, you have different ideas. Gene St. Pierre. It's, uh, it's a great way to meet the community. Uh, I'm new to Miami, only three years, so it's going to meet a lot of really cool people at this place. Only three years? Yeah, I know. Reed. And? Luis. And what do you guys do? We put this on. We are Miamians. Wow! You guys did this? Thank you for the yeah, submission. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've been here four years, and when I came down here, I was absolutely blown away at what was happening here, like the cultural movement, the energy on the arts, the media, technology. I just want to highlight that because I think it's definitely the epicenter of certainly the U.S. and I think the globe. So. But Miami is very much a growing scene with the expansion to Wynwood, the design district, and we really wanted to try to bring out what is, you know, the little bit of the culture of Miami and show off a little bit of the talent we have here because, you know, traditionally the talent goes off somewhere else, but we kind of want to keep the talent here. We're not being greedy, we just want, <laughs> we just want more of that talent to stay here and grow this city culturally. It's such a diverse city. It has tons of talent again and to keep it here to grow with technology combining with creative art I mean it's it's very important for us to develop that here it's challenging in the early going as artists move out but that conflict I think is necessary because it brings more attention to the to the topic and to the area and then hopefully more money will come in to support artists in that respect folks like yourself in an event like this is to do just that so you can move out of a Winwood and now have more opportunity whether that's subsidizing on the rent side so that artists can put up installations and do galleries uh, and not get gouged on the rate. Without the artists, without the work that's being produced, I mean, that's what actually makes Wynwood what is Wynwood. So I'm hoping that grows to other areas too. And it doesn't get, you know, there is an aspect of it that doesn't get over commercialized. And when areas do, it's time to find, you know, a different area. Hi, my name is Jill Dupy. I'm the Beaux Art Director and Chief Curator here at the Low Art Museum. But we're here to serve uh, the community and the South Florida region and really the wider world. And I think what really sets us apart, because as I'm sure you know, there's so many wonderful arts organizations in Miami, museums, galleries, art spaces, um, places for making art, but we are really the only um, encyclopedic collection here in Miami that has permanently installed galleries. Our collection spans 19,000 objects, 5,000 years. So uh, you can really take a wonderful walk through history in, in a short afternoon here at the Low. I just shared my afternoon with the Bakehouse director uh, to talk about ways that we can collaborate and really leverage what we have to offer. So one of the things that we talked about that I would love to see happen is having some of the Bakehouse artists come to the Low and respond to collection pieces in our permanent collection and be able to showcase those works together. Are you a big art guy or what? I, I, here's my saying. I know what art is, but I don't know what I like. <laughs> now we're here with Barbara Extraordinaire, Brian Padron. Is that right, Brian? That's correct. And how long have you been here in House of Faith? Uh, about four years now. They come in here, you know, they come in here with a frown, long hair, and a bunch of bad news, you know. But when they walk out of here, you know, I, I like to, I like to know that I, I made a difference in that person's day, and that's that's pretty much what keeps me going. I've always wanted to do Steve Harvey's tape because he gets, I think he gets the Beijing done and I want to see if I can match that perfect Steve Harvey lining like his barber does. That, I think that'd be awesome. Oh, the Beijing, it's actually, uh, it comes in a powder form. Uh, what you do is you whip it up um, with some water in a bowl and you go ahead and you apply it like a paste. And you could use it to fill in uh, empty spots in a person's beard or in their tape. Or if a person's hair is just relatively light and they want to darken it up, you can go ahead and do that. It's like a semi-permanent. Men are equally as vain as women. Would you at least say that? I, yeah, you could say that. You could say that. Yeah, you, you could say that. Uh, I can trust them. You know, I'm somebody that always wants to look fresh and be clean. And I know since day one, stepping foot into this, you know, shop. And I bounced around a lot of shops back in the day. And then getting a cut, looking at yourself in the mirror and knowing, wow, I'm confident now to go on my day, 
deal with whoever. It has a very homey environment. I actually went to HML High, so just to be able to continue staying in the area and supporting a local business like this one, it's it's great. Me and my boss, we do intend on uh, getting out there and getting into these barber competitions. You know, I want people to see what the HML House of Fate has to offer and to let all these barbers know that I'm coming. You know, don't forget about me. Yeah, I'm coming. Don't forget about me. You know, so that's pretty much, that's my goal. And uh, five years from now, I would like to think that I'd have a, a branch of the HMO House of Fades, maybe Doral and the Gables area, something like that, you know, and really reach out and really take what we have to offer to different communities and really get out there and show the competition that we're here. Yeah. It gets better. It gets better. We finish. <laughs> yeah, it gets better. Come on. The best, the absolute best right here. And I'm here with the boss man, sir. What's your name? Uh, my name is Alejandro, but everybody knows me as Wheela. I started cutting my own hair. I used to go out to the barber shop and fix my own haircut, so I um, just started doing it for fun and it stuck. I've been doing it for 15 years now. Wow. And how's Brian as an employee? He's good, he's really loud and uh, <laughs> he's uh, full of energy. I can give you a Miami Dolphin sign, a heat logo, maybe some numbers, right. you know, the logo of your favorite team. The city of Miami is beautiful, the women are beautiful, the cars, the weather, everything here in Miami is the best. You won't want to be in the other state. Miami is where it's at. Hey, wh where was Scarface made at? Miami. <laughs> Miami is a city where people judge on appearance. So regardless of whether or not you care about your appearance, other people are going to perceive you that way. When you look good, you feel good. Absolutely. Look good, you feel good. Whenever you guys get a chance, you're in Miami, you want to come see real 305 haircuts, real good clean work by professionals, come check us out at HML House of Fades. Hopefully we'll see you soon. There's real Miami culture over here. Thank you so much for joining us this week on Miami Talks. I'm your host, Nadia Sencio, and we are the voice of Miami.